Hello, friends. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I hope your Monday is going well. I needed to get this started. It's actually Tuesday, so it's a bit of a late start to this reading vlog. So let me update you on what's going on. I just got home from getting my nails done, doing a back workout, and this is the color I chose. It's way cooler in person. It's like super lime green for St. Patrick's Day because that is on Thursday. But I wanted to update a bit. I've been having a absolutely fabulous time reading Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois with my friend Joanna. It's our buddy read and Jay's Louise. It's been taking me like a freaking three weeks to read this, but that's okay. I'm trying to find, oh, the page that I'm on. I just got to part 10 and I really like this. It says, we can only be interested in men by knowing them, knowing them directly, thoroughly, intimately. And this knowing leads ever to the greatest of human discoveries, the recognition of oneself in the image of one's neighbor, the sudden startling revelation. This is another me that thinks as I think, feels as I feel suffers even as I suffer. This is the beginning and only the true beginning of the social conscious. W.E.B. Du Bois, the individual and the social conscience. I really like to read more from that. So I am on page 647, which is that far in. I think I've got about three hours left in the audiobook, something like that. So it's not like a perfect book. If I was doing five star ratings, I don't think I would give it five stars just because I have some issues in the pacing maybe. But overall, I mean, it's a fabulous read. I absolutely recommend it. 3000%. I think this author has stunning prose. I think they excel in interpersonal and familial relationships and family establishments and histories. It's excellent. Not to mention the themes are wonderful. But since I DNF'd hurricane season last weekend, I did pick up Beasts of a Little Land. It's funny because I'm also reading Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance this month, so they're very similar. But by Juhei Kim, so this is the book I don't have the dust cover on, and I am absolutely enthralled in this. It is the perfect read for me at this time, this historical fiction. Right now, I think we're in 1919. We started out in 1917, but I'm on page 105 and I started this two days ago. So that's pretty good for me, honestly, for my reading pace. So I'm about 25% of the way through and I've already tabbed quite a few pages that I've turned down. Just little things um, we're following. Well, there's this whole prologue and then we're not really following those characters quite as much. Um, we're following Jude, who is a character who gets taken to this school to be a courtesan um, in training and some other characters, Luna and Lotus, that she meets along the way. And then we are also following um, this boy who became an orphan. His parents died and he goes to, I can't remember what city, and he gets involved in this like merchant gang who steals to stay alive of other orphans. And so the two of them meet up and start this friendship, even though they're not really supposed to. There's also some political goings on between like Japan and Korea. Um, and we're following whether like the major commander in the army, I'm assuming, and then some higher up people who need to make important decisions because basically the Japanese are like starving the Koreans because they have made rice so inaccessible. The price is so high and they can't get supplies. So they're starving them, saying they're liberating people, but really just taking this power. So that's really interesting to see as I just don't know a lot about the history in this time period. Um, so honestly, I'm finding it fascinating, very interesting to read. I am physically reading this and I, I don't think it's like anything profound yet, but it's a very enjoyable read. And like I said, I'm learning things. It's very easy to read and I like the dynamics so far. So basically at 100 pages in, about 25%, I have no complaints so far. So uh, this week I should finish the love songs. Um, and I would assume by the end of this reading vlog, I will finish Beasts of a Little Land as well. I did start reading, I had to go get it, but I did start reading um, Intuitive Eating for Every Day and journaling with this, which 
um, I'm going to continue on with because I have found that helpful for myself. I need to keep my mind focused on it daily. And then some book mail I wanted to share that I'm very excited about is Runaway by Alice Munro. So I didn't know this. I don't know if this is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature or just another book by this author, but Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books had excellent things to say about this. So I decided to pick it up. The cover is lovely and very intriguing. And it says, it's a book of extraordinary stories about love and its, and its infinite betrayals and surprises. The people she writes about, women of all ages and circumstances and their friends, lovers, parents, and children become as vivid as our own neighbors. It's her miraculous gift to make these stories as real and unforgettable as our own. So it's a short story collection and I'm, I'm just in the mood for something like this. I wanna throw away my whole TBR. I am being a mood reader and I'm not gonna throw away my TBR this month because there are some things I do need to get to, um, but I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to specifically focus on TBRs I had set up earlier this year, reading other people's favorites or prize winners and things like that. I really wanna focus on my physically owned TBR and just things that sound really, really interesting. And I'm trying to be super ultra mega careful in what I pick up because I've kind of been in a slump. Like I've been reading a lot of things I've not liked or that have just been okay. And I need things that feel comforting and cozy, not in like a happy way um, or like an uplifting positive way, but I don't know, quiet, character driven, thinking, thought provoking, simple books that are very, very slow paced is what I'm in the mood for. So um, it's funny that I'm enjoying Beast of a Little Land so much because this is not slow paced. We definitely have lots of time jumps, but it feels quiet in a way. I don't know how else to describe that, but I'd love to hear if you guys have read this because something I want to get to soon. So yes, I've just then I'm gonna sit down and hopefully work through some more of this after I edit tonight. And then I need to still get to the book and the workbook before therapy on Friday. It's just time in life gets away from you, man. Okay, for those of you guys that ask, I just want to share my lunch because that's what you guys want. So just keep in mind, don't model what you eat after me because um, we all have different nutrition needs. But I broiled some broccoli in the oven and then I have brown rice and chickpeas and guacamole, spicy guacamole and sweet potato fries. I can only drink these sparkling waters without my stomach hurting. And I already had a cup of pineapple um, and huge win for me. Um, one of you lovely friends on YouTube reminded me that real rice is good <laughs> and better than cauliflower rice. So thank you, because this is the first time I've had regular rice in ages. So I thought we would do a little grocery store haul, um, because there's a grocery store I want to go to that's on my way home from the gym, because usually Thursday is grocery day at my house, um, which is tomorrow. Um, and I've arrived at the store, and I have forgotten everything that I needed to get, except for like one thing. So... Let's group together, figure this out, go get some groceries, do a haul, and go home and make a fab freaking dinner because I'm excited about what I have planned tonight. Okay, your girl needs to eat some food because it was leg day at the gym and I'm starving. So I actually didn't go get new scrubs and I didn't go get my ears pierced. That was on tonight's agenda. Nails were yesterday, so it's pushed off another day, but that's fine. Need to listen to my hunger cues and eat before I'm starving to death. So I just thought I'd show you this quick grocery haul um, that cost me way too much money, but I am that girl that always will buy herself her own flowers. My boyfriend buys me flowers all the time. But I went to get tulips and there were no blooming tulips, which made me very, very sad. So I didn't buy any of those, but I bought these pretty white ones because they look good in my house and these lilies that will open soon. 
Aren't they beautiful? I'm very excited to put them in a vase. So the majority of this haul is like specialty vegan snack food that I can't necessarily get at my local regular grocery store. That's why the entire haul feels like junk food, but we're not gonna focus on the good or bad foods. That's for certain. Um, let's just go over some of the things I got. I got the snack packs for the white cheddar vegan skinny pop because it's easier for me to have them just portioned out ready to go those are vegan and it allows me to have like a cheese taste every now and again because if you've tried vegan cheese there is no good Ugh. and then we have my favorite vegan candy ever and i never eat vegan candy but i'm trying to incorporate more things into my diet and it is these Oops, i'm gonna break my flour so coconut milk caramels they are vegan they're super healthy ish for candy, so I love having these on hand at home. So I picked up a couple of those to keep in stock. Keeping with the candy theme, um, this Hue brand, but get back to human. Once again, vegan, and I got this new flavor to try, cashew butter and raspberry dark chocolate. So I've had the regular cashew butter one before, and it is absolutely wonderful, so I thought, dark chocolate raspberry cashew butter sounds even better and then just salty dark chocolate these chocolate bars are amazing for vegan and yeah they're pretty good i usually get the endangered species that donates to endangered species but this is no refined sugar no cane sugar no sugar alcohols no erythritol no dairy or soy palm oil or emulsifiers so another random vegan thing i got to try is this Parmesan vegan dairy-free cheese because I make a lot of things that I use nutritional yeast flakes on. So I probably won't stop doing that, but I thought I would also give this a try. And I picked up some granola for my acai bowls, like smoothie bowls that I'll show you guys hopefully when I make later tonight, post leg day fuel. So I got kind, uh, just, what is it? Peanut butter clusters. Granola is one of those things that's so hard to find as a vegan because I swear to God there's honey or milk chocolate in like all of them, but this one does not appear to contain any ingredients that I can't have. And then I also picked up the Safe and Fair Birthday Cake Granola that is for sure labeled vegan. And so I think I'm gonna put this one in my smoothie bowl tonight, very much. Looking forward to that. Okay, that's all the junk food stuff. Now just some health food broccoli slaw because mine had went bad and I swear to you it makes every salad immensely better adds extra crunch um just fresh salsa for taco bowls chickpea bowls I eat blueberries like they're going out of style so some blueberries and then I actually got this to try for the first time spicy queso style plant-based cauliflower dip that is vegan and never seen this, never tried this, but I'm gonna try this in my taco bowl tomorrow. You betcha, really excited about this. So that is a quick, very expensive grocery haul. Now let's eat. Okay guys, I will do a full check-in with you later, but I just got home from the gym, made some lunch, and I've been working on editing a video and I wanted to take a moment to say, if you've noticed my new channel art, please go check out my dear friend, Ola. Um, her channel is Wild Witch here on YouTube, and she is just the sweetest kind of soul, has such cool, unique, creative content, and she's a brilliant artist as well as a beautiful soul. Um, so in the description box below, you can find links to her portfolio in case you are interested in art, but she is just a dear, dear friend of mine that I love, and I just wanted to shout her out since she did such a phenomenal job I wanted something Asian inspired because of my tattoos um, and balance. So I have the tiger and the dragon like yin and yang balance. I also have um, the cherry blossom tree on my side. So all those things are incorporated into the channel art. And I wanted soft, corally pink tones that are just like flowy and calming and peaceful. Even though like your girl still jams to death metal on the daily. Okay, I'm a rough around the edges little goth girl, but... I also want to channel those vibes for my YouTube channel. Um, and I just want to say thank you Ola so very much for doing that. And that's all for now. I will get back to you guys with more updates for reading later. Okay, so now I have a little bit of time to chat about what I have been reading because since we last spoke, I did finish the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. I finished this yesterday and I am so glad I read this. So this, I was just boxering my friend Joanna saying that 
I mean, to do a full discussion of this, you could spend hours talking about this book, everything that the author did and intended to do, and um, how many important themes are discussed and thought-provoking statements, just ideas, everything about it is so thought-provoking, truly. And it really is a book that makes me want to learn more and know more and dive more into the history of the United States, history of real people like W.E.B. Du Bois, and just have a better understanding. I think there are so many strong points to this novel. I think that the multiple timelines between the songs of the past, stories that we're learning intermixed with the present day storyline really meant a lot and it kind of helped everything weave together perfectly at the end. So I just can't give it enough praise. We have homophobia, talked about sexism, racism, religion, um, colorism, so many things to think about. So I think the characters were all fully fleshed out and well established. There were a couple little nitpicky problems I had with it. I think the pacing, the last quarter of the book was definitely my least favorite. I enjoyed the entirety of it, but the last quarter was my least favorite of the book. And it just didn't flow quite as nicely as the first three quarters. And I think that's because there was a huge gap between um, the song chapters. And then there were some changes within characters that I don't think were fully explored as much as they could have been for my personal reading taste. So highly, highly recommend you pick up the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois if it sounds interesting to you. Now, Joanna recommended that I read The Comet by W.E.B. Du Bois. So I did read that today. And I can't help but think that John Wyndham was inspired to write The Day of the Triffids based on reading the comet. Interesting. Let me know if you guys know anything about that, but that's how it feels to me. Um, and I would really like to read more by W.E.B. Du Bois in the future. So after finishing that audiobook, I decided to pick up, I think the body is not an apology and I can't think of the author's name right now. I got about 30% of the way through that before I decided to just set it down for now. It was good and I do recommend it if you are in the need for this type of book. It's more about the radical self-love aspect than about body acceptance, at least in that first third. And I was really looking for more something to do with body acceptance. I'm not so sure I struggle with like radical self-love movement as much. So I don't have anything wrong. Like I have nothing to critique it on other than it's not what I was looking for at the moment. So I might return to it at some point, but I set it down for now. It was just through the library I was listening. And so what I'm still reading, hoping to do some reading sprints tonight, it's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I've never went out on St. Patrick's Day, but I do have my green. I was forced by a friend at work to participate. Um, I've been reading the, all that to say, tonight I might do some reading sprints instead of going out. And I'm reading Beasts of a Little Land still. And I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm on page 204. And it's, as I said before, nothing groundbreaking, nothing over the top or profound, but something I love. And I just can't help but want to read it all the time. Even when I'm like doing random things, I'm like, I want to sit down curl up in bed um, and read this book and just sink into it. And what a great feeling because I haven't had that too often lately where I just really wanted to sit down with a book. I think it's the perfect length. I'm halfway through it right now. Tons of turned down pages. The characters are enjoyable. They're likable. Um, and the stories are just really nice to follow. So I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Uh, this just came in the mail today. So this is the Patreon buddy read for the month of March. So this will be the next book that I pick up. But I mean, I guess we could go into, I guess I could take you into the library now and we could look for the next book that I want to listen to because I do want it to be a book that I already own so that I can start to whittle away at my physical TBR. It just seems unnecessary to... Um, start another book that I don't own. So should I turn you around? Let's look here. Okay, so. Ooh, what about Cleopatra and Frankenstein? That's one I really wanted to get to before too much time passes. Um, I know Chouette is on Scribd. Also the Bell Jar. Ronnie, what is that? 
girl woman other is on scribd or um hoopla maybe ah, what do i want to read luster is on there okay let's check if cleopatra and frankenstein is on there this is obviously this book i've wanted to read this for quite some time well since i hauled it what is this angle yo it's quite long how like just aesthetically pleasing is that color and photograph my nails are ruining everything aesthetic in life at the moment. <laughs> oh, it's only 360 pages. Okay, let's check script, honey. Did I tell you guys about the book hangover from the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois? No, I have messaged my friend about it, but oh man, I have the biggest book hangover from that. And I was mentioning that with the colorism and there's a lot about passing and things in Love songs, it made me want to return to Passing by Nella Larson. And so that's what I have decided to do. And in the midst of this afternoon, um, running to the outlet mall to get scrubs, cooking dinner, and whatever else I've been up to, I've listened to 37% and I'm listening to it much, much more slowly this time, which is working for a way better reading experience overall. So definitely going to stick through this one. I'm really glad I restarted it and I'm really glad I decided to slow the audiobook speed down a ton and yeah, I'm really really into it. So, I'm going to shower and wash my hair and sit down in my bed and read um Beasts of a Little Land for the rest of the night. I was in bed at 8:30 last night and it was the best feeling in the world. Today's St. Patrick's Day. I'm about to be in bed at 8:30 again. <laughs> What up, what up, what up? Okay, I just finished, it's been a day already. It is what time? 11.40. Um, I went to bed at 9.30 last night and I got up at 5.30, did my incline cardio walk. I better go get some books to share with you guys. I then cleaned my house, which I still need to finish a little bit of cleaning. Then I had therapy, then I filmed a video. Now I'm about to head off to the gym to do a glute leg day. Um, but in the meantime, what you girl been reading? What the heck have I been reading? Okay, so told you how I DNF'd The Body is Not a po an Apology. And earlier this month, I DNF'd Passing. But then I picked back up Passing because I forgot to even say this. The reason that I picked up Passing is because I have decided to love myself. And self-care for me this month looks like not forcing myself to read another 900-page book, which is The Books of Jacob, translated from the Polish I had every intention of reading this. I pre-ordered the audiobook. I really am interested in themes of religion, so I thought it would work very well for me as somebody who doesn't consider themselves religious. But I started listening to it and my brain was like, do I have brain cells? Mush. Couldn't understand it and I was just like, now's not the timing. I'm going through a lot mentally. Um, I have a lot on my plate socially and mentally and I just, you know, I'm trying to get from moment to moment right now in my life. That's all we can do, right? That's what we just talked about in therapy is getting from one moment to the next. So that was not going to be conducive to a great reading experience. It's there if I want to listen to it later on, but now's not the time and why would I force myself to read something that I don't think I'll love? But I... Then decided after having the biggest hangover ever from the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois to pick up Passing because we have some discussion of that in love songs. And I finished it by Nella Larson yesterday. So I read it. No, I finished it this morning. I read it in a day and a half. I did restart it from the beginning. I think I told you and that was fabulous. Um, oh my God, the ending. I didn't know what happened and I did not expect that to happen. But okay, that was shocking. And um, yeah, I think this is a great read. I think it's an important read and I'm glad that I read it. And I'm curious to know which of you guys has read it because it was definitely something I really enjoyed reading. And now I would like to read the book that was inspired by it. And I think it's called The Vanishing Half. Also, every single time I said they were sisters, Claire and Irene, no idea why I said that. They're friends. They're friends. I knew that. I just kept saying sisters because I think they're sisters in The Vanishing Half but they're not, they're friends. Um, <clears throat> now that I've clarified that. So what did I pick up after finishing passing, you ask? 
Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney because it came in like a miracle from the library right as I finished passing. And so I was like, thank you, Jesus, for sending this my way J just on time. And I'm now 35% of the way through it. So if you can't tell, and I just started it today, I listened to it while I did all of my chores, my vacuuming, cleaning, whatever it is, getting ready for the day. Um, and I'm obsessed. Something about Sally Rooney's writing works so well for me. I don't know if she writes for me. I don't know if she has like the secret to what works well for my brain. Once you start, she just can't stop. Pringles? Is that it? Anyways, um, so we're following these two friends, Francis and Bobby. And at the beginning, you just know they like label themselves as Bobby being a lesbian, Francis being a communist. And they meet these people one day who are a married couple, um, Melissa and what is his name? Nick, I think. And it's about how their relationship progresses as this foursome. And um, yeah, I don't want to say too much to give it away, but she just has such a way with words that are, it's subtle, but it's not subtle, but it is subtle. I think some people would think that it's not subtle, but I like it. And uh, I love her writing. I love the ideas. She's talking about the themes that are present. And I don't know, I'm just completely engrossed in this like affair story. And I'm dying to know more. And so I must continue on with that today. I think I should finish that within a couple days. I generally don't read or listen to audiobooks much on the weekends at all when Paul is here. But, you know, Monday we will restart if I run out of time today. I'm going to maybe listen to it when I'm on my way to the gym. But sometimes that's like pump up music because we got to get hype to have a good workout, you know, get the blood flowing. But um, so that is my audiobook. I'm 35% of the way through that. And then I have 150 pages, just under 150 pages left in Beasts of a Little Land and just love it. I don't know. It's not like a favorite book. It's just a book I recommend if you want to have a good time. And maybe it's because I read too many intense books. And this is just something that while it has intense subjects of war with Japan, trying to take over Korea. Like there's a lot of things that are really, really important discussed. And we're talking about courtesans and sex work and things like that. So it's not that it's lighthearted, but it's not too dark. It's very easy to read. It's very fast paced, as in we jump timelines a lot. The characters are likable. The love story is precious. So I really want to finish that soon too. But that's everything I'm reading. Um, like I said, I need to cut up a pineapple, go do a leg workout, come home and make some lunch. And I'll be listening to conversations with friends as I do all of the above. Maybe not the workout, but maybe. You never know. Um, okay, I think that's all. All right, guys, let's go get this lift done. Do a leg day workout. Let's kill the glutes. Make some lunch and call it a day. a rare time to read on a Friday mid-afternoon and this is just so beautiful it says everyone dreams but only some people are dreamers the non-dreamers by far more numerous are those who see the world as it is there are the few dreamers who see the world as they are the moon the river the train station the sound of rain and even something as mundane as porridge become something else with many layers the world feels like an oil painting rather than a photograph and the dreamers are forever seeing hidden colors where others just see the top shade the non-dreamers look through glasses and the dreamers through a prism i absolutely love that this is not a quality determined by intelligence or passion two things most often conflated with dreaming and i won't spoil anything else in that but also chapter 19 broke my freaking heart man okay we need to wrap this up what i need to learn is that i might as well wrap my vlogs up on fridays because i tend to not read on the weekends anymore and it's actually a really good thing for me because i think that i would place so much importance upon finishing like 
a certain number of books that I would feel stressed about when I was reading, how much I was reading, I would constantly feel the need to read. What is this light streak again? And now that I just kind of go with the flow and if I don't have time to read, I don't have time to read, I am in a much more relaxed state. Sure, I'm reading less books per month, but that really doesn't matter to me as long as I'm enjoying what I'm reading. So um, the last little clip that you guys would have seen is me reading a bit more of Beasts of a Little Land and I'm still enjoying it. I hope to finish it up probably by Tuesday or Wednesday because I have about 100 pages left, but I work 12 hours tomorrow and then I go to the gym at like 8.30, so it's gonna be a late night. Won't really have a lot of time to read then. So maybe like 50 pages Tuesday, 50 pages Wednesday, if I can get that done, um, that would be the goal. So I can start the Patreon Buddy Read Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance. And then I am still listening to Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And a friend of mine was reading this in Patreon. She started when I did and she summed it up pretty well. If you're watching, great thought process you had here. It's And I'm only halfway through still. But it's kind of boring where not a lot happens so far, but you can't put it down. You can't look away. And it's not even like weird, exciting, provocative, strange things are happening. It is simply Sally Rooney's writing style that works so dang well that it completely like engrosses you in the story and it, it captures your attention from start to finish, at least if you're someone like me. And so while I definitely don't like this as much as normal people yet, normal people is probably just going to be something that's like a favorite. Um, I definitely still enjoy it. It's worth reading and it makes me even more hopeful for reading Beautiful World, Where Are You in the Future? Because I just really, really get along well with her writing style. I'm still torn because I feel like I don't get too much reading done like and accomplished from week to week. So it makes me feel like my vlogs are not like content that's that valuable. But let me know. I know you guys tend to love them. Should I keep making them? Because I like getting to talk in depth about the books that I'm reading in the moment. I just always feel bad because it's like I tend to not read Saturday and Sunday and then I wrap it up on a Sunday. It goes up on a Monday and it just feels like weird. I'm not sure about it. So you guys let me know. Um, also, let me see. If, let me know if you guys would like to see any specific things like for next week's vlog or future vlogs I did a poll or like a question and answer thing on Instagram on my bookstagram story telling you guys to let me know the book you want to see me read the most and I'm definitely going to incorporate some of those books ASAP like maybe even in next week's reading vlog so maybe I'll just kind of like go through them and a lot of them were books that I'd already read but there's definitely quite a few that I am interested in reading and quite a few that are pushing me outside the box outside my limits and comfort zone and that's the point that's kind of fun and then you guys get to see books that you love um, and see me read them too so let me know if you are excited about that idea or what you guys would like to see. But yeah, so Friday, we didn't do too much. Saturday, we assembled an entire Ikea dresser. And then I had my friends over for like a housewarming party and that was a ton of fun. And then Sunday, I was a little bit hungover, but we did a do-it-yourself do project um, painting this Ikea mirror gold from silver because there's no silver allowed in my house. So I guess I'll show you guys in next week's vlog. Um, the mirror all finished being painted and then we went out to watch the state game tonight on Sunday night. They lost, Michigan won. I went to U of M, my boyfriend went to state, so we won. And um, yeah, so that was the events of this weekend. Busy, but a, a fun and accomplishing weekend. I don't think that sentence makes sense. It's late, I need to eat some dinner. Um, but yeah, if you've made it this far, give me a clover for St. Patrick's Day and yeah, give me the feedback about the vlogs, what you guys want to see in them specifically. I would love your suggestions and constructive criticisms and feedback. I hope you guys are having a great Monday and have a wonderful week. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.